The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me on today's webinar. I'm Kevin Greenway, and I'll be presenting part two of our three-part Tenzig Manager webinar series. And uh, today we'll be covering best practices for remote management and configuration of Tenzig Thin and Zero clients. This has been an increasingly important, important topic for our customers who have either had to shift endpoints from workplace to home or look at new projects as a result of employees working from home and remote locations. So we hope you enjoy the webinar. And again, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day. We, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, just onto a bit of housekeeping first, the webinar is scheduled for one hour and will consist of some slides as well as live demonstration of recommendations and best practice. There will also be some polls throughout the webinar and it would be really helpful if you could attempt to answer these to enable us to gauge our audience and provide a better experience for this and future webinars. As usual with webinars, uh, attendees will be silenced throughout, but given an opportunity for Q&A at the end of the webinar. So if you do have questions throughout, feel, th feel free to throw them into the questions panel. And, uh, and as mentioned, I'll review those uh, towards the end. Um, finally, if you haven't already, please take a look at part three of the webinar series, which takes place the same time next week. The third part will focus on best practice of endpoint management using the Tenzig Manager. And this will be presented by my colleague, uh, co-worker, Ed Richardson, who's the head of technical services here at Tenzig. And uh, again, finally, the webinar recording will be available after the webinar, so you can watch it at your leisure. So a summary of the contents we'll be covering. Firstly, we'll cover a very quick overview of the Tenzig Manager and home in on the relevant server and agent components, which will be covered throughout. And importantly, we'll then cover the common installation scenarios, including on-premise cloud-based, a single site and multi-site setup, as well as the all important remote and home worker scenario. And since it's the most common deployment, we'll then provide an overview and demonstration of a multi-server setup which caters for exactly that. So remote management of Tenzig endpoints and secure access for technicians and administrators to our HTML5 based web console. The final se section before Q&A then focuses on securing access and uh, connectivity. And for this, we'll be looking at how best to set up access filtering for remotely connected clients, as well as enable secure access and privileges to the Tenzig manager and web console and then finally, how to assign an AD signed or commercial certificate to the cloud connector. So firstly, I want to provide a very brief overview of, on the Tenzig Manager. And for those attendees who either saw this um, and the next couple of slides in part one, or you've seen it in previous Tenzig sessions, I do apologize. Uh, however, it's important to include this for, for those who, attendees who are completely new to Tenzig Manager. And I hope there is uh, new people out there. So for those who did not attend part one of this series, uh, the recording is available on YouTube and you can find it by subscribing to our Tenzig uh, technology channel on YouTube. And uh, there's some great content on there. We've been really busy through this uh, pandemic and lockdown, creating lots of, uh, lots of relevant content for you. Tenzig Manager is a Windows-based centralized management tool it's downloadable from tenzig.com forward slash manager and can be installed to Windows virtual machines, which are either on-premise or cloud-based, as you'll see in the examples I'm going to cover. The Tenzig Manager can be used to manage all types of Tenzig clients, both Linux and Windows-based, uh, with the only exception being the Teradici-based clients we have uh, in our V1200 series. So these are this, this particular series are managed instead using the Teradici management console. As you can see in big bold letters, the word free, uh, I'm really pleased to say that the licensing model is simple and pain free, as it says, it's, it's completely enterprise free. So this means no complexity. It's free regardless of whether you manage one to 100, 1,000, 5,000 or upwards. And additionally, the cloud-based management features, which we'll focus on here, are also inclusive um, in that word free. 
So this model is now almost unique in our marketplace where our competitors choose to charge a combination either based on X number of manageable clients as well as specific enterprise grade features, including specifically cloud or remote management. The Tenzig Manager server consists of a single executable, which as mentioned is downloaded from tenzig.com. And it consists of the four components mentioned here. But the two that I really want to home in on during the webinar today is the cloud connector and web console. So the cloud connector can either be installed to the same machine as the Tenzig Manager server or a separate machine to make up a multi-server Tenzig Manager setup. The role of the cloud connector is to provide configuration and management capability of Tenzig endpoints by providing a bi-directional SSL tunnel between Tenzig endpoints and the Tenzig Manager. The cloud connector then proxies communication between itself and the Tenzig Manager server which is traditionally installed locally um, to itself or as mentioned on a separate machine. An additional role of the cloud connector is to also proxy inbound connections for the web console. So again, the cloud connector provides a bi-directional tunnel between web browsers. So for example, technicians and administrators who require access to the Tenzig Manager via the web console and that then proxies those connections to the Tenzig Manager server, which runs the web console component um, with the underlying IIS web service. Uh, the web console is a component which offers HTML5 browser-based support for the Tenzig Manager. This allows support of popular browsers, uh, Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and others. And as mentioned, this module requires IIS, which is checked and installed automatically during the install of that component uh, within the Windows OS. And as discussed, connections to the web console are then typically proxied via the cloud connector. And this is done um, for the sake that if the cloud connector and web console are both installed on the same machine, that they can both coexist together. So we're just going to start our first poll here, just again, so I can gauge uh, the audience that's, uh, that's with me today and um, understand whether you're already using the Tenzig Cloud Connector today, or not necessarily even the Tenzig Cloud Connector if you're already using a Cloud Connector to manage other types of endpoints. So I'm going to launch this poll on the screen, and I'll give everybody uh, sort of a little bit of time to answer that. And again, it's really, really important for me that everybody answers this or as many people answer this as possible so I can gauge the audience. It looks like there's still a few votes coming in. So we're up to about 73% 70, of uh, attendees have voted. So that's great, thanks guys. So if I share this result with you, we can see that uh, the majority are not actually using the cloud connector so it's great that you've come here today to find some education on this so the vast majority are either not using tenzig manager at all or using it without the uh, without the cloud connector so let's let's press on Okay, so we're now going to focus on the agent components, and this slide is really simple to explain. So the cloud agent, as you can probably appreciate, resides on both Tenzig Linux and more recently Windows clients, and is used to connect to the cloud connector either locally or remotely, and again, but establishes the bi-directional SSL tunnel. For Tenzig Linux clients, which run on our NOS, PicoS, or repurpose firmware, the cloud agent is included natively in firmware, and has been that way since it was introduced way back in 2016. For Tenzig Windows-based clients, this was very recently introduced, um, and this feature was effectively fast-tracked um, throughout the lockdown where we saw the unprecedented demand for remote management. So it's included in our uh, Tenzig LTS or Windows 10 LTSC 29 images uh, referenced here, and it's also available very shortly for download from tenzig.com. If you do require access to it as of now, um, please speak to Tenzig support and I'll throw up the, uh, the contact details at uh, the end of the webinar. We're now going to focus on common installation scenarios. And again, uh, the ones that we're going to 
specifically homing on for the demonstration are the multi-server and the remote homework with the fact that it's so um, relevant uh, today. So this starts with the really most basic example architecture um, where all of our resources are based in a singular on-premise location. So importantly, this includes our users or employees who log into the tens again points, which then in turn connect to their resources. So whenever we're talking about resources, we're referring to VDI or EUC or server-based computing, and it's the likes of Citrix, VMware, WVD, amongst uh, the, the other technologies that I've listed here. The Tenzig Manager is then installed to a singular host for, for providing configuration and management of Tenzig endpoints. Now, it's really important to note here, because this is often a question that we get asked in initial introductions to the Tenzig Manager. Um, and so this is true of every example that we're going to see moving forwards, that there's no relationship between our users' resources. So again, the VDI or EUC or server-based computing resources and the Tenzig Manager. So for example, the Tenzig endpoints do not require the Tenzig Manager to be operational for users reaching their resources listed here or vice versa. So they're all completely independent of each other. And additionally, once configured, the Tenzig endpoints retain their configuration locally in onboard flash. So they only communicate with the Tenzig manager thereafter in terms of signaling to show when they're online or offline, if shadowing is required, um, if further configuration changes are applied, or if we reboot or power on or power off the endpoints either on demand or, or through scheduled tasks. In this slide, we can see a similar environment to the previous with the change in the fact our resources, again, i.e. Citrix, uh, VMware, et cetera, and potentially management may be cloud-based or a combination of both on-premise and cloud. So the important point to note here is that for control of our endpoints, which are based on-premise, is that we will leverage the cloud connector component for providing the bi-directional SSL tunnel between the endpoints and the Tenzig manager the latter of which, as we've just described, is cloud-based. So again, this can either be installed onto a separate server or combined onto a singular server, as mentioned. And again, just remember that the, the resources and the management planes are independent of one another. So that gives you the freedom to choose uh, your own cloud platforms, different cloud platforms for each uh, type of resource or management. So we'll now move on to different types of server deployments. And similar to the first slide, this is a very basic example where all of the components uh, are installed to a single server. And this then allows me the opportunity to explain the discovery and registration process when using the cloud connector. And this same model then applies carrying through to somewhat to, to our remote uh, workers. So the tens again points boot, and after check-in, they have network connectivity, a DHCP request is sent, the DHCP server um, responds with the relevant IP configuration, as well as the DNS domain suffix and, and server addresses. And at that point, the Tenzig agent that runs on the Tenzig Linux and Windows-based endpoints um, then query the DNS server that's been published through the DHCP lease, and uh, they then obtain the network address for the Tenzig Manager server. So we'll go into this later in terms of exactly what it is, um, but where that SRV record is created, the Tenzig endpoints then establish a connection uh, or a registration request, in this case towards the cloud connector that sits down here, and the cloud connector then effectively proxies that into the Tenzig Manager server. So that's a very simple model of a single server deployment. And then we start to look at a multi-server deployment. So again, all of the endpoints and uh, the servers, et cetera, still contained at the corporate uh, office or the corporate network. But the difference here is that we're segregating those different roles onto different servers. So for example, based on security rules or load balancing and, and scalability. So for example, in this here, we have the server which, uh, which again is completely un uh, independent and, and also has the MySQL database server, the uh, regular MMC console that can be installed onto, um, for example, 
a Citrix form or a VMware form and act as a published application for your administrators and technicians, as well as workstations and laptops. And the web console component, which again provides users with uh, tablets and laptops, basically any device with a browser, access into the web console. And then as mentioned, the cloud connector. So it might be in this particular case that the cloud connector we could have a combination as we'll see in further examples that we have a cloud connector both on the inside of internal side of the network and a copy or an instance of the cloud connector in a dmz where we want to manage our employees and users that are now based at home so all of these configurations and settings are managed using the tensig cloud manager settings as we'll uh, cover when we get towards the uh, the demonstration but all very simple stuff we then focus on the same environment but single site uh, client deployment and this is where i throw in another poll to understand where your um, clients are physically located at the moment so again i'd really appreciate if you could all answer these questions uh, so again you've got uh, where are your tended clients located are they on your lan wan internet or cloud So we've still got a good percentage of votes coming in. Thank you, everybody. So I'll close that poll now and share the results on screen. So for the most part, it looks like we are managing tens of clients within a LAN, but also quite a high percentage in WAN and Internet Cloud. So again, a good across the board uh, result here. So really uh, interesting to see. Thank you very much. So. Again, what we're going to focus on here is the, the ten, Tenzig endpoints, how they reside relevant to the Tenzig manager. And again, this is just a simple topology where everything is within the same local um, lo local corporate network. So again, remember that uh, scenario of how the endpoints, the principle of how they discover and register towards the cloud connector. We then get to a multi-site client deployment. So this is probably more a more traditional multi-site client deployment. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, the sites, the remote sites or the branch offices are connected uh, in this example using something like uh, hardware-based VPN or one infrastructure or probably more recently private cloud. So the cloud connector can be implemented uh, in this scenario as the Tenzig manager without the cloud connector requires several TCP and UDP ports. So the cloud connector, again, benefits this type of environment with the fact that it consolidates everything down into that um, SSL tunnel, the bi-directional tunnel. So multi-site consoles, as we see in this example, can be uh, installed to allow technicians at either location to provide the necessary support for devices which are local to them or remote to them and perform those local and remote operations. And again, as we saw in the last slide, the web console is ultimately available as well. And this is where it probably gets more relevant to the demonstration that we're going to cover. Um, so we're gonna home in specifically now on uh, internet-based endpoints. So without any corporate or WAN or VPN infrastructure. Um, so the cloud connector in this scenario is typically installed in uh, your DMZ to segregate uh, your internal network. So where the Tenzig manager server resides within the internal network, uh, that's separated from external access within your DMZ uh, for providing the remote connectivity of the endpoints here that are completely remote. So again, it's a branch office, but the difference here is that we are completely reliant on the uh, the internet in this in this particular location so again without the cloud connector to hand that would be quite a complex setup with the fact that we'd have to rely on traditional um, settings and rules like port forwarding and NAT uh, translation etc so the cloud connector will serve the purpose of consolidating that and again tunneling all communication and the difference in this next example is that our Tenzig manager server is now installed to any one of those cloud services mentioned. So it's important to say that whilst we don't currently offer this as a 
as a cloud-based service, you can, of course, install the Tenzig Manager in the same way you would on-premise. So, you, so you'd essentially pick a Windows-based virtual machine from your cloud provider um, and then install the Tenzig Manager server components either on a single VM or multi-VM based on your requirements. So this type of environment would be preferred and tends to be used where all of the VDI and EUC strategy is cloud-based. So again, going back to that earlier example, this is where all of our resources are essentially cloud-based. So this type of scenario can also be utilized where there's no presence of any on-premise resources to host the Tenzing Manager server components. And then finally, we look at the uh, ever or now famous uh, remote workers. So these are our staff and our employees uh, typically working from their individual home office locations. Uh, so as mentioned, the Cloud Connect has been around since 2016, so that we were geared up very, very well for this type of approach. And uh, again, this, this can be adopted on top of the previous two examples where the components are either installed like in this diagram on premise or cloud based it really doesn't matter it is important to state that in this particular example where you've traditionally got in most cases a singular um, employee at their home office which connects most often through a, uh, a i guess a commercial uh, or low cost router or a router that's provided by their isp it's probably fair to say that one thing that they won't be able to benefit from in this scenario is the DNS client discovery because of the fact this router lacks the, uh, or router if you're joining from the US, it lacks the ability of providing those DHCP and DNS options. So for such situations like this, the Tenzig Cloud Connector Server address can be entered into the client during the initial setup. And again, I'll cover that during the demonstration. And it's also important to point out that um, our shipping uh, and production teams can, based on uh, agreement, uh, make this initial config during um, during build and, and assembly as well. So if you are interested in that, talk to a Tenzig sales representative for, for more information on how you can arrange this. So let's look at the, a closer look at the components required and the demonstration that we're going to perform. So on the inside network or internal LAN, we're going to install the Tenzig Manager server, the web console, and the MMC console. In this case, we'll call it server number one. And um, on server number two here, this is within our DMZ or DMZ, and this is where we're going to install the cloud connector in order that we um, expose this to be able to manage and configure our internet-facing Tenzig endpoints. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you could also have a, a secondary server on the inside network where you install another instance of the cloud connector, and that can be used for managing your corporate based endpoints using the cloud connector, either again for the LAN or for the for the WAN or private cloud. So you can install multiple copies of the, uh, the cloud connector. Just a couple of points to note here about the uh, this approach that we're going to demonstrate. So when installing the cloud connector, it authenticates with the Tenzig manager using something called a relay code. So this is a unique random code created during installation. And it's important and uh, very uh, highly critical that this matches between both the Tenzig manager server and cloud connector in order for that connection to succeed. And uh, then also in recent versions of Tenzig manager. So again, this is, this is in effect part of the unprecedented demand we've had for remote uh, worker support like this. We've also extended the cloud connector to support something called ODP or on-demand port. Um, so from version 3.04.6 of the manager, what this feature does is it rationali rationalizes the number of network ports used between the Tenzig manager server and the cloud connector. And the result of this is that your network managers and security teams life is a lot easier in terms of both uh, getting this approve, approved for change control and uh, also in terms of auditing. So it'll be publicly available very soon um, in our 3.05 release. Uh, so watch this space and probably 
to save you asking the question at the end, if you're not already signed up, uh, get to tenzig.com and sign up to our technical notifications. And that's where we'll notify within a matter of uh, hopefully days or week uh, that uh, imminent release. So a couple of additional points about ODP. A port is required for each simultaneous management task to the client. So that's essentially why this is needed. So we recommend basing the port range on your largest client configuration group that exists within the Tenzig Manager and then multiplying it by two to three. So for example, if you have a configuration group of 500 clients, the port range that you configure should be 1,000 to 1,500. And we'll cover those ports on the next slide and you'll see how to configure those during the demonstration. And then finally, we also recommend disabling TLS 1 and 1.1 1 .1, um, unless you're specifically using our very uh, early legacy firmware, the Linux V8 or V9. And again, I'll cover that during the demonstration. So in relation to the ports used between the Tenzig Manager, which again resides in the inside network here, and the cloud connector, which resides in the DMZ, let's cover that now. So inbound, so from the DMZ to the inside network, there's essentially three TCP ports that we need to open. So we've got TCP 50,000, and that's the default port that we need to open up to point towards the component that uh, runs the Tenzig web console. So again, if you are permitting the web console, that's the port. 8001 is required for firmware updates. So again, that's ever important if you want to update your remote endpoints. And TCP 52500 is probably the most critical of the three. That's required in order to proxy the client registration and uh, signaling checks and, and, and packets and information between the cloud connector and the manager server. On the outbound side, so this is where the ODP feature comes in. So this is where the Tenzig manager server needs to establish a connection back to the cloud connector on the DMZ. And this is where a port is required for every simultaneous connection that's that's made within five seconds, which is our default uh, keep alive or timeout uh, for simultaneous tasks. So these can be technicians and administrators shadowing the clients. They can be uh, scheduled tasks where we're, where we're waking endpoints. They can be scheduled tasks where we're shutting down endpoints and rebooting endpoints. So again, as I mentioned, that is configurable. And by default, the port range is 30,000 to 30,250. So on this slide, we then look at the ports that are required on the external side. So this is again where we're exposing completely to the outside so that we can manage the Tenzig endpoints for our employees that are working from home. So put very simply, it's TCP 443. And that again goes inbound to the DMZ, or again, if you're cloud-based, then it's DM it's 443 uh, to your cloud uh, platform. And in the same breath or same token, as I mentioned before, this same mechanism is used to proxy connections for users with the web console. So again, we'll see during the demonstration how to disable this uh, if needed. It's worth just Mentioning the DNS SRV record, I've pointed to that a few times during the webinar. Um, so this this is the, the piece that permits the cloud agent to discover and reg register itself with the cloud connector automatically. So this step's generally done by the networking or the server team. There is a, a more complete guide, uh, as you can see on uh, tenzig.com again, um, but let's just cover a brief example of it here. So. The domain uh, generally relates to the forward lookup zone or the domain suffix with which you're assigning to the Tenzig endpoints. So that's what they're, what's assigned to the Tenzig endpoints through their DHCP scopes. And as mentioned in the earlier example, once the endpoints received its DHCP address, the cloud agent then specifically queries this service record. So this service record has to be uh, created by your network or server team in this particular location or protocol. And the result that we expect is the host that's offering this service. So in this case, it's the host that's running the Cloud Connector role. And that in turn gives us the IP address of that uh, particular host. And at that point, 
the cloud agent then sends a WebSocket towards the IP address, which establishes a connection to the cloud connector, and the cloud connector then proxies that towards the Tenzig Manager server. Here's a, a quick brief look at the cloud agent configuration before we get to uh, finally get to the demonstration. So uh, the enable Tenzig Cloud Management Agent option here is on by default, as is the server address from DNS SRV record. So where in the previous slide the DNS SRV records created, the connection occurs um, seamlessly. And where the DNS SRV record is not present, then this is essentially where you would fill out the server address field manually to enable the cloud agent to connect to the cloud connector. There's some other options in here which we can then cover during the demonstration, which, uh, which is right about now. So let's hope that the demo, I always say this in my webinars, but let's hope that the webinar goes as well as it did earlier. Uh, sorry, not the webinar, the demonstration. So let me explain first what we have here. So this first virtual machine is uh, already pre-configured. I've already installed the Tenzig Manager server uh, component as well as the web console component to this virtual machine. And the console, as you can see, is already running without any endpoints currently checked in. I then have, well, let, before I show that, let's just cover this part. So in my cloud manager settings, there's a couple of relevant things here that are required for when we install the cloud connector to our second virtual machine. And if you remember from the uh, slides, that's the relay code. So the relay code is here and I need to copy that in order to point that uh, into the cloud connector. In addition, the web console, which I've also, as mentioned, got running on here, is also, as we saw in the slide, running on uh, port 50,000. So again, during the cloud connector installation, we'll have to point it towards that, assuming we, uh, we want to leverage that particular feature. So there are the cloud manager settings. Um, we'll, before we go into the install the cloud connector, let me just also bring this into view. So I've also got a virtual machine running our Linux NOS uh, VMware platform where we can demonstrate the uh, the connection. Like everybody else, I'm here working from home in a in a sweaty English home office on a on a hot, humid day. Uh, so the third and final virtual machine is my VM called KGDMZ MGR. So this is where I'm going to install the cloud connector and then point it towards that uh, manager server that we uh, that we were just connected to just before. I'll we'll just enter the password. It will extract the files required for the installation. And at the first step, I just need to select the components that I want to install in this case, which is just the cloud connector. And at the next step, we're going to configure the relevant steps in order to connect the cloud connector in its, in its uh, components towards the Tenzig Manager server. So first step is the port, so port 443. As we said, that's configurable. And then the certificate. So by default, the installer generates a self-signed certificate. But in most cases, uh, for any deployment, it's likely that we use uh, a third-party certificate, so either Active Directory signed or commercial certificate, and we'll look at that in the next section. So for now, I'm just going to generate off the self-signed. And now at the next step, I need to specify the host uh, with where the manager server resides. So this can either be host name or IP address. And then this is where I need to enter that all important relay code that we took from the Tenzig Cloud Manager settings on the Tenzig Manager server. So hopefully the clipboard's working. Yes, it is. I'm going to click Next. And we then have the uh, IP address and port for the Tenzig Manager web console, which again, is, in my case, is the same box. So again, in my case, it was port 50,000. 
and it's now going off and creating the self-signed SSL cert and should then complete the, the rest of the configuration with a couple of extra clicks of next and next and complete. Okay, so that's completed. We click finish and uh, we should be good to go, but let's just review in uh, the Windows services. So there's our Cloud Connector service and as we can see, it's running. Now, um, before we sort of step away and test this, let's just go into our Cloud Manager settings. So here is where we can disable TLS 1 and 1.1. So again, you only need those for those legacy uh, Linux clients, the version 8s and the version 9s. Here's the summary of the web console connection that we entered during the installation. And here, as mentioned, so if you want to disable the ability of uh, administrators and technicians connecting to the web console through the cloud connector externally, you can disable that, uh, that, that here. I'm gonna leave it on for now because it's an important feature we want to uh, demonstrate. And uh, under manager, again, that's the summary of, of the cloud connect connecting to the manager server. And then under advanced is where we can turn on the ODP. So I'm just gonna leave it as default and again, apply that and click okay. And it now requires me to restart the, uh, the cloud connector, which I'm gonna click yes to. And uh, hopefully at this point, we should be good to go. So we bring the Tenzig Manager server back into view, and then we bring our test endpoint into view. And if I go into Cloud Manager, so again, I'm not using the server address from DNS SRV in this example. So I'm just going to manually specify the host name. That uh, should have been accept. It's accept by default. We need to set it to that with the fact we're using the self-signed cert. If we test that connection, we can see it succeeds with the connection, but it's warned us about the fact that uh, the certificate validations failed, which again is because we're using the self-signed certificate. If I then click apply, we should see that service status changed to connected. Uh, which is great. We we'll click OK. And then when we come back to the Tenzig Manager console, we can see that uh, that client has checked in. And if we try to shadow that particular endpoint, we can see that it's established a connection on port 30,000. So again, that's leveraging the ODP that we mentioned through the, uh, through the previous slides. So that's good. So we've got end-to-end -end connectivity and uh, we are good to continue. Now, what I'm gonna do here is just retrieve the configuration, which you can see is running. That typically takes a couple of seconds to uh, to run, slightly longer if, again, like here, it's, uh, it's cloud connected. So we'll let that run, and uh, when we come back, it'll have succeeded. The next part we're going to focus on here is um, how we can filter our remotely connected clients into separate groups. But before we do it, it's important to explain why we're doing this. So from a management perspective, we may want to assign different management templates and settings to different types of users. Um, from a security, security perspective, second from a security perspective we want to ensure that where we are applying configuration that it's to specific clients which match our access controlled filters and finally based on location if clients are connecting from a specific geographical location they may want to filter under a group which is administered by a local team and or receive settings specific to their location, such as time, date, and language settings. So the two examples we'll be looking at during the demonstrations are Mac and, and cloud agent registration code filtering. 
We've then got the Tenzig Manager Role Administration. So this allows us to set specific roles and privileges for users who require access to the Tenzig Manager server via either console. So again, to summarize, this is the technicians and administrators who are responsible for the Tenzig Endpoint Management. So this tool is integrated with Active Directory and that allows you to assign roles based on AD users and groups which have specific privileges as they sign in to uh, either console. And again, we'll cover that uh, during the demonstration in a moment. And then finally, the ever important uh, certificates. Um, sure, like me, you guys probably hate certificates or love to hate them. Um, so as we mentioned, it is possible to assign both Active Directory and commercial certificates. Uh, and as we saw, we, we by default generate a self-signed certificate. So a couple of things just to consider for both types of the recommended approach. So first off uh, with commercial certificates, whilst they carry a cost, uh, they have the benefit that the majority of root and intermediary certificates are already present in the Tenzig Linux and Windows-based endpoint. So ultimately, if you use a commercial certificate, it requires less configuration and, uh, and administration. And as a result, is ultimately more seamless. Active Directory certificates, on the other hand, carry zero cost, but they require input of the AD root and intermediary certificates to the Linux endpoints and also Windows endpoints, unless the clients join to the same AD domain which sign the server certificate. So during the demonstration, I'll cover how to assign an AD signed server certificate, which should give you enough of a grasp uh, to essentially assign both types of certificate in your uh, real life environments. So that brings us to the, um, the second and, and final demo. So the first thing that we mentioned was the group filtering. So as we saw before, the clients checked into the manager server, uh, but in order to automate our configuration and other uh, auto automation rules, we need to create a configuration group. So when we create a configuration group, we can give it a name, I'm just gonna call it remote. And for a description, we'll call it webinar. I'm gonna filter by platform, and then we're gonna take a look first at the cloud agent registration code. So again, the reason that we use this is to enable us to filter those remotely connected clients based on location, based on management, etc. Now, in a traditional environment, we would typically filter by IP range, but in a remote environment, it's not so easy, especially for those home workers because of the fact that they're typically connected behind dynamic IP addresses as well as NAT. So it's very difficult for us to expose the users and employees through their IP address. So the cloud agent registration code uh, facilitates that. So I'm just gonna call it remote in this case. As you can see, we can add multiple codes here. And uh, to save asking the question, the name pattern here is uh, case insensitive. Now, also during the PowerPoint, I mentioned about MAC address filtering. So that can be where you can even be more granular and specific so that you're only allowing uh, your assets, your own assets to filter into those configuration groups. Um, now I'm not covering that in this webinar. This is covered in w webinars one and three, but that again is where we can set up the client configuration. So at this point, when I click OK, it creates the group, but at the moment the group doesn't have any uh, any clients in there. So if I come back to the endpoint, we go back to the cloud manager settings and we go into the registration area. This is where I can enter my code. So again, if I put in remote, click OK and then click apply, that re-establishes a connection back to the cloud connector. Now, in this case, because of the fact that the client was already in effect checked into the database in order for that to appear we have to wait for the console to refresh or in some cases just click repopulate and that will re-query the database and then match according to that filter so again you can be as granular as you want with that you can do it based again on different types of users uh, users based on location 
but again that gives you the ability of filtering clients into uh, into groups using the cloud agent next part is the role based admin tool so this admin tool is included on the VM running the Tensig Manager server component and it's very simple to use essentially there's roles so roles are in effect joined to the local security groups and the, and the also the ability as I mentioned of AD users and groups as well so by default we take the built-in local administrators group and any any user that's a member of that uh, administrators group as we can see our domain admins and specific domain users are in effect have complete control over the Tensig Manager console. And then similarly, we create some um, uh, two groups within this local VM as well. So Tensig administrators, which again, same as administrators have full access. And then our Tensig Manager technicians, which have very much a, a subset of permissions as, uh, as we can see. So in order to edit those, we can do a few things. So for if we want to, we can add additional members to that particular role, both from domains and local users. We can also add additional roles in here. So this is what we see most frequently. So again, you could search, for example, for your domain admins and you can put domain admins into their own specific role and again, go away and set specific privileges based on those specific uh, roles. So really it is that straightforward. Whenever you make a change in here, you're required to save that configuration um, and to make it effective for the users, the users have to sign in and sign out of the console for that to be effective. So the third and final part is the SSL certificates. Uh, again, running a, probably a little bit short on time here, so I'll have to glide through this. So again, back to the VM that's running the Cloud Connect role. What I'm going to do is to open the certificate snap in. Now I'm gonna glide through this, but there is a complete end-to-end -end guide that we have available to walk your certificate team or your network team or whoever it is who's responsible for your certificates to walk through this. So under personal certificates, we can see any existing certificates that have been generated for this particular server. Um, and the one that's in here currently is our self-signed certificate. So I'm just gonna go through and request a new certificate from my uh, AD. This bit does tend to take uh, a little while with the fact it's got to pull these over from the US. So this pulls in any uh, templates that we've previously uh, created. So the one that I want specifically is the web server v4. And as it says, more information is required. So let me complete that step here. And this is really critical here that you get this right and don't do like I did earlier and do typos or have things like your time and date wrong on uh, any machines because obviously it impacts uh, whether things establish connection or not so the common name importantly needs to match the host name or the fqdn of the the vm running the cloud connector uh, we also need to specify the ip address as well as the loopback address under general we need to give it a friendly name which again is just an arbitrary value that uh, appears then in the certificate snap in and a description. And that should be it. So when I uh, click on apply and okay, and then attempt to enroll that certificate, give it a moment. And as you can see, that succeeded. So 
here we can see that we now have a, a secondary certificate and we can see that it's been issued this time by our certification authority. So there's our root and intermediate uh, CAs. So in order to assign the cloud connector to that particular certificate, we have to go in manually to the executable. So it's under program files, Tenzig, Tenzig manager, MGRWS relay, and the config file here. So this essentially launches the same utility that we saw during the earlier install. And uh, as we can see, it's currently using the self-signed. So if I click choose, this then allows me to select my certificate that was signed by my AD. Now, if, again, if you're using a commercial certificate, you can import that uh, step here. We click next, and then it's gonna go through the other steps again that it did, or the same steps it did during the install. So it's gonna put that back to 50,000, and then click next, and finished. Now, the one thing that we do have to do to apply that is we have to restart. But actually, before I do, let me open a browser so you can see the impact of this. So without restarting the cloud connector, when we connect to the web console, we can see the browser's warning us that the site isn't secure. So at the point uh, I restart the cloud connector service, and then go back to the, uh, the manager server and open the browser and reconnect, fingers crossed, we can see now that it's connected and the connection's authenticated using that, uh, that certificate. Now, again, in the interest of time, I retrieved the configuration earlier in order to show you the fact that on the endpoint, I had earlier imported the certificate, not because it takes a long time, just because there's a lot of steps to cover in slides and, um, within an hour. So what we're looking at here is the list of certificates that are on the Tenzig endpoint. So there's our intermediate certificate and there's the root. So I copied those down earlier. So fingers crossed that should now uh, authenticate that connection on the, on the Tenzig endpoint as well. Um, just to give you a quick demo of that as well, however, again, if we go back to edit, we go into certificates here, you can see we can import the certificates. So uh, recommended is base 64, so ASCII based certificate files, but we do do conversion of these different types of certificates as well. And again, not covered in this webinar, but in parts one and three, you should get the grasp of how you then generate a template where this can then be shared to multiple uh, endpoints in, in succession. Okay, so under here, let's bring the, uh, the endpoint back into view and uh, in the cloud manager, let's just click test connection again. And you can now see that the connection is okay and the server certificate is authenticated. So similarly, if I change this to reject, so this is only gonna connect now if, um, if the certificate's validated, which again, you can see it has. So that, shows you how to um, how to import the root certificates onto the endpoints and again if we look now locally on the endpoint you can see our imported certificates as well as those base certificates so the base certificates again are used if you're using any combination of commercial certificates and the imported certificates are your ad root and intermediary so that concludes the uh, the demo And that brings me to poll three, the final poll before we hit to the Q&A with five minutes to go, which is uh, a free demo. So again, this depends, of course, whether we've got existing customers on the webinar or new customers or new prospects to Tenzig. So would you like a free demo trial unit? Poll's coming up now. I'd appreciate it if, uh, if you could answer this and then we can do a follow up uh, after the webinar. So it looks like we've got a fairly high percentage of existing customers, but good to see that uh, there's a few yeses there. So um, we can we can follow up with those after the webinar. We'll just leave that for 
another minute or so whilst I start to review the uh, the questions that have come in. Okay, let me close that poll and I'll, I'll do my best to work through the questions that have come in. So the first one is, how does Windows imaging work in a WAN scenario? That's, that's a very good question. So in a WAN scenario, i.e. where you have access um, to some sort of Pixie server, um, that is possible. What isn't possible are users, it isn't possible, for example, to redeploy an entire Windows image to a user that's based at home effectively. However, in a WAN scenario, let's say that you've got a branch office, you could in effect um, pixie boot uh, that particular unit and restore an image from a, a file uh, server or some sort of SMB share that uh, that is local to those endpoints at those branch offices. And um, as mentioned, there are probably one or two limitations of the cloud connector and effectively Pixie is one of them and Wake on LAN uh, is another. Uh, next question is, does the cloud connector in the DMZ need to be a member of, of Active Directory? Uh, the answer to that question is, is no. However, it, as you probably saw, it might make things a little bit more complex when you're creating the AD certificates, uh, etc. But the, the the pure cloud connector service is is completely independent. Uh, where are the debug logs held? Um, so the debug logs. Oh, let me just show you. The debug logs are generally available through the syslog viewer. So by default, they're in a, a mode called info, but you can, so there's very basic information in here by default, but um, you can turn that into verbose by going to something like, like the cloud manager settings and setting that into debug on both the cloud connector and, uh, and the manager service. So again, you turn it to debug. That does require a stop and start of the services, but uh, that's where you'll find the logs and that gives you information pertaining to things like whether the cloud connector is connected, um, also WebSocket requests, etc. Another question, when putting the cloud connector on a different machine, do you also need to run another MySQL instance on that server? That's another good question. You don't necessarily need that. The reason it does that is for a component called the um, called the certificate manager, which is used for our repurposing firmware where the licenses and certificates are based. Um, so it does that by default, um, but it doesn't, the, the MySQL database server in terms of storing configuration of the endpoints um, and, and uh, information about the assets, that's generally contained on the Tenzing Manager server. Another question, would you recommend moving to Cloud Connector for management of both internal and external clients? For sure, as we said, at external clients. Uh, internal clients, the, the benefit of doing it for internal clients is the fact that it consolidates all of the ports between the endpoints and the manager server into one as opposed to several. Um, there's no real stipulation that you have to do that other than, again, if you've got things like firewalls internally, it probably makes those rules uh, easier in the fact that you're opening one as opposed to multiple. Another one uh, is, can you manage V1200 clients with this? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. So um, the, uh, the V1200 series are Teradici based clients. So they are managed using the Teradici enterprise console. But uh, again, our sales team can provide information on that particular management uh, tool. And uh, that does provide uh, a similar set of features. Another question, we're interested in configuring the cloud connector to support home users. So hopefully the, uh, the webinar has helped with that. And if you require further assistance on that, then uh, feel free to reach out to the support team and our pre-sales team, who again can give you one-on-one -on -one, uh, help. And I think just in the nick of time, that uh, concludes all of the, uh, the questions. So let me just leave it with the, uh, the contact details. Uh, so 
you can contact both support or sales here so if you're contacting sales it's sales at tenzig.com for the americas or sales at tenzig.eu for EMEA and um, those same numbers uh, ultimately can get you through to uh, sales as well so i hope everybody uh, enjoyed the webinar again thank you very much for your time really appreciated and again please join uh, my colleague co-worker ed richardson where he'll be going through the uh, more the endpoint management at the same time next week so thanks again and uh, see you again soon